Hey guys, today I'm back and I have two epic world records for you that have been taken from David John with some help from some other people and also uh, credit to David John on the 10x10, 10 10, but that's irrelevant. So these are the smallest 10x10 10 10 and 11x11 11 11 doors. The 11x11, 11 11, we took two layers off of it, one from the bottom and one from the top, and the 10x10, 10 10, we just took one layer from the top. So let's just see these in action. These don't work on paper and spigot servers for some reason because the mine carts that I'll get onto later in the top do not work properly. Uh, but other than that, these are some pretty cool doors. I think they're a little faster than David John's ones, but not by much. Uh, pretty boring to watch, but uh, at least the tape is decently fast. And so is the, um, the top where I'm going down, so I'll explain a little bit in this video how it was possible to do these because obviously some people are curious about the tech and I would be too if I saw this because it's hard to really discern what is going on with this mess of just observers and stuff. So now it's just the tape and it's open so might as well go to the 11 by 11 now. So while we wait for this thing to reset after closing I'll read off some of the names here so this was, this uh, 10 by 10 was made by mostly me, some concepts from Wellux, some concepts from David John, and well, we didn't really do anything. Uh, but he still gets credit anyways, because he worked on the 12 by 12 that inspired this. Uh, I kind of came up with some of the concepts for the top as well. I really just took the tape and the cards from that one. Uh, so here's the 11 by 11 opening. It's pretty similar, uh, but the way the doors work are actually like pretty different. Well, not really. It's just the concepts for, like, the top worm are a little different in both doors because I knew more when I made this top circuit, so... And I could have used less of the bottom space. This 11 11 was made by me. Uh, we did the bottom circuit that you can see here, and Wellux uh, made the tape. But uh, Wellux didn't really step in on any of these, and also... Uh, it was me alone that made this. I just stole concepts from other people. All right, so let's just uh, look at the back sides of these. I can do both of them. I can do the 10 by 10 while the 11 by 11 is resetting. So it takes a little while to reset. Also, don't mind some of the uh, entity spam down there. I'll get to it later. See, this thing is still going to be resetting. Start opening that one first because the 11 by 11, believe it or not, is a little bit faster because of how I did the top. You can watch them both. So, as you can see, there's these mine carts. You can see them more clearly on the 11 by 11 that kind of like trigger these detector rails that make the top worm a lot easier. So, while the top, while the uh, 10 by 10 is just derping around, the 11 by 11 kind of gets straight to business here. And the top worm is much faster. You can see right here. So this is the part that doesn't work on like paper or spigot servers because for some reason the cards just get stuck on the blocks and don't fall through them, which is a little bit unfortunate. It means the whole thing doesn't work. All right. So, anyways, so what allowed us to take a layer off the 10 by 10 was um, because David John used the same like user dust line here, and we actually power the bottom pistons at this level, which David John could not do. He could only do at this level, so we had to move this worm one block up, so it was one block bigger on the top. Same concept for this right here, uh, except uh, there are still two blocks here for David John's one, but he needed a dust line on the ceiling, and that caused him to need a layer of obsidian on the top to block uh, these pistons from firing, among other reasons, and also just because there was like, less space in general. Uh, so, also, there was one layer taken off the bottom of the 11 by 11 and that was just because it's really awful to, um, to make this. So, big thanks to Hui for making this uh, kind of awful circuit. Uh, but David John had one extra layer on the bottom because he had glass block, like right here, and then the worm. And so, uh, then that makes it so it's really easy to push up all the door blocks to, like, this spot. Because you can, you can just have a bunch of dust lines instead of all of this garbage here. Um, so yeah, that's how we cut the layers. So let's just go on to explaining how some of this works. So 
Uh, let's just explain the bottom here first. This bottom part was made most by David John. So basically what's happening here is we just have this thing that goes back and forth and spams the, the worm just to go up. And so that's pretty simple. Basically, it's just this timer here, this timer loop circuit that gets activated uh, from a toggle right here. Uh, and also this uh, slider gets activated both times and it does the side pistons for this right here using, uh, and also it does some stuff here, but mostly just the side pistons. Uh, I'll explain more about this uh, later, but for all intents and purposes, it's just the side pistons and also it activates the top tape because every other time this thing activates, it activates the top tape uh, via this. And even though this is hooked up to an input, this blocks it for every single movement in the top uh, worm circuit. As you can see, there isn't any infrastructure to power it from the top. There's just no room. So we have to abuse the bottom a little bit more. Okay, so after that, uh, we can go on to the tape here. So uh, this tape uh, gets started from the bottom, as I previously mentioned. It's controlled by this slider right here. The slider goes back up to stop the tape. Uh, and this clock just kind of goes around and it just kind of uh, folds and unfolds this. You can see it actually requires a few extra moves, and I'll explain that in a little bit. So you can see it has to start in this position with the block already retracted fully up. Uh, you can see it stops in a different spot, though. As we go, and I'll, I'll start explaining this in a bit. So you can see it stops right here. Uh, but since this grabs because of the detector rails and stuff, uh, you have to make sure that each number of movements on each cycle is equal. So we have to retract this back up with two pulses to this note block. So everything's going here. You can see the side spamming a little bit. I'll explain that later. So basically all this is is just a clock that starts uh, from this thing every other time, of course. So like whenever this rail goes back up, it powers this toggle. And this time it won't power because it goes down instead. So basically this thing is just a clock. It goes forward, uh, powers this, and then goes back. And then what else it does is it powers these two lines at very specific intervals from each other as to not power these things and also to work out better but the thing is i just kind of randomly spammed these delays and they worked i didn't know exactly what i was doing until i made this bottom part here but as you can see it's actually not connected up to the bottom here at all which i'll explain later um so what's going on here is just this clock going around there's just two things being powered and then it goes back and then repowers itself and, and so this will keep going indefinitely uh until we get to this bottom circuit right here uh, this gets blocked on the closing. So this right here, this detects when we are two movements away from being done. And the dust line here, when it's, when the top worm is like this, we are two movements away from being done. We need to power this once and then get this going. So basically, wh the way this worm works, uh, if you give it a uh, two game tick pulse, it will uh, simply grab and then it will block the thing from going back up so it'll just stay like this but if you give it like a four game tick or three game tick pulse and move this piston back up this piston will not extend to block because it gets moved away from the detector rails that will be uh, at this level right here so if you move it up then the bottom worm will get a chance to start going and it just goes all the way up to the top so what's going on here is so i found out a nifty thing is that if you power uh, two pulses to this line right here, 13 ticks apart, it will do exactly that. It will do a three game tick pulse at this level. So what this circuit actually does is, so you might be wondering, okay, so this powers every other time. So how the hell are you avoiding uh, this thing powering the tape and whatever? So what happens is, so it's in this state right here, when that circuit activates, uh, it gives a single pulse, moves it up to here, and then gives a double pulse, which moves it down and then pushes it back up before the observer gets a chance to do anything. And you can see that's the same concept up here. And it gives two pulses like that. So uh, the way it actually achieves this is through this zero tick slider right here. It just gives a zero tick instantly to this slider. And then next thing it does is it actually gives a pulse to the slider and then blocks it. And that's where this uh, piston base comes into play. This also kind of intersects this, but these don't activate at the same time, so nothing happens. So this will give a double pulse instead of a single pulse from the zero tick. So basically it's a single and then a double pulse that will cause that to happen. So next is uh, once this goes all the way down, this thing right here, you can see uh, 
it didn't activate because it gets three pulses on the closing. Uh, so it activates this thing, uh, resets the zero tick slider, and then also sends one more pulse finally. And what this does is it gives a two tick to this line and that catches the top. So instead of keeping on going, this flying machine, this uh, will just give like a longer pulse and then just simply like retract these like that. You, you'll see it, you'll know when you see it. So let's just watch this one last time. See this tape circuit. Bit complicated, just kind of. Well, actually, not really that complicated. This blocks some things, and so does this. That's why those spam the timers right here. So you can see this thing going down. Now we can see this circuit will eventually trigger down here once it goes down far enough. Should be two more moves now, not three more. So now it starts. You can see the side will go spam once and then spam twice, and then it does the three game tick pulls. And then this circuit goes, and then it catches at the right time, and the tape starts. Because this thing is tied to the tape starting whenever it does the catch, or the uh, or the uh, opening singles, it starts the tape. So that's the way the 10x10 10 10 works. The 11x11 11 11 is a little bit different. Uh, we have the input in the top this time, because simply we needed to uh, have a better way to block all of this stuff going on. So first off, the tape's activated differently. I mean, still same concept from over here, but we activate it on the uh, opening the first time uh, using this part instead. Uh, that whole tape concept is still the same. We get the singles differently, though. This does the single piston thing. And basically the same concept as the 10x10. We just need one more block of space on the top so we can extend down one further. So it's the same thing. Oh, and also this is not uncontained. That's why there's a block here. It was there the whole time. Okay, so, I mean, it's just an updater piston, so why would it be? Uh, so, same thing here. This tape is just a little bit different, because we use a different way to trigger it. And instead of having this detector rail come back up and trigger it, it just turns on and off this comparator, so once every four times, it will activate the top. So, that's that. And we can get onto the bottom circuit for the closing. I'll explain it first before I actually use it, because you can see, whatever. So, anyways... Uh, this will give a double pulse. We need this piston here to update this to prevent it from getting update suppressed because little known fact, here's some very easy update suppression. Uh, if you just, uh, any piston or sticky piston retracting an observer facing away from itself into itself will update suppress itself. Uh, isn't that neat? I hate when that happens. Uh, it was particularly unuseful in this circumstance, uh, but basically we have this right here, this slider. Uh, just goes back and forth. This triggers the sides. Uh, I'll get onto all this garbage later. Uh, basically, only what you see here does the sides. Everything else, this stuff, is for the worm. And then this thing, this piston pushes over, gets powered, does this uh, tape thing that gets, or does the slider that gets unblocked and starts an observer clock. As you can see, there's an observer there. Uh, and then it just starts this thing going, and this permanently blocks the slider over to the right, because we need it for the first move to not be locational, because the dust lines just don't work out. And no, you can't have one observer slider on top. I wish you could. If you could, it would make my life a lot easier, but it didn't. So you need three sliders for the bottom worm, which is a bit unfortunate. So this is just random stuff. This is basically, if you just had to, this is trial and error redstone that caused all this, except for this part, this, this I made. But all this stuff done by... We use just trial and error. Uh, yeah, good luck understanding this. No one understands this. It will not ever be understood as to why this works. There's a few certain timings you can pick out here and there that have to happen. Uh, but overall, it's just random stuff. So we can see this happen now. The slider goes, pushes it up. I don't know if anyone really saw that. It happens so fast. Uh, it's just random stuff. I mean, this block gets powered and stuff and messes this up a little bit. But by chance, it just all works out. Don't know what each part of this does, but it uh, does something, man. Okay, and anyways, there's another really annoying part of this. Uh, you don't, don't update this while the, uh, while the door is closed. Just don't update it. It was needed because uh, there was a timing for the slider that updated them properly, but it for some reason updated the scaffolding too while the slider is moving, so it just kind of like died, which was a bit unfortunate. Uh, but oh well, it is what it is. So now uh, this slider will go once again on the uh, opening, and this is attached to a toggle, which is important later because this gets powered four total times throughout the thing, 
and also the sides will not go uh, very immediately during the opening. So that brings us to the top circuit as to why all this is like this. So basically the top circuit is almost the same except there's one very important difference and it's that uh, the signal constantly goes down and all of these lines get powered. Uh, and also we use a comparator this time because uh, it's smart. It's Clearly, we can't use a comparator here. Oh, yeah, because there's an updater. But the updater's been moved to the other side, so have no fear. Uh, we need updaters for each one of these lines because of the way that I do them. So, basically, there's... Instead of uh, just randomly doing pulses, they're all deliberately 13 ticks apart. Except for, like, of course, when you, like, go between these. It doesn't really matter, though. All, all that matters is that they're 13 ticks apart, so this bottom part works. So, instead of having to abuse the bottom, we can just do the 13 timing for this to get the three game tick pulse to start the worm or to start the bottom worm to send it back up and then also this timer uh, just stops the clock rather than the um, the bottom doing anything because the only thing that the bottom does besides of course spamming the thing on the closing uh, is uh, it starts the tape after uh, the catch so basically all this does is the catch and the tape and this timing is very particular and there's not very much room to get the timing like there was like over here like I had like all this room to waste time uh, but I only have like like this much space to waste time so uh, this card stack um, just a lot of cards just so I can get this particular like approximately like three pixels tall card it's a lot harder to get three pixels than you think uh, so and also this is doable in uh, survival. You can get this. This Yes, this minecart is clipped into this repeater on top of this minecart that's clipped into the block and the repeater. You can do it. I, did, I proved you can do it. Um, but uh, yes, also this is clipped into a comparator. But that one's really easy. Curve track clipping is fun. Uh, everything else is not fun. So uh, Also, when this slider goes, it uh, updates these. And so basically, the way the top catch actually works is, of course, this observer is detecting and does the slider because this will only do two moves that actually gets detected. It'll move down once on the second to last movement and then once in the last movement, and this cart timer is timed so the second to last movement will trigger it. You can see this cart timer hits the string, and then when it goes away from the string, it does one side pulls, and that's why the side closing is delayed as well because it goes through the same circuit, uh, and then just activates this. So we can see all this happening now. Also, this is like expanded a little bit just because of the way everything is. See, this is all going. Uh, this slider went, you can see. And now this is set up, the toggle, so the first pulse will go through. See, the 13 ticks uh, difference is very efficient. Just sends it right down. So you can see it does the three game tick pulse. This cart timer is going, sends it up, catches the top. And also I found out beforehand that a double pulse could in fact catch the top because this uh, this observer chain does a double pulse, and if you line up this double pulse with the observer chain double pulse, you get like a three or four tick pulse, and that's good enough to catch the top. So that's how it works. Um, yeah, big thanks to Wilux and Kui for helping with these records, and also David John, because I could not have done this without uh, knowing some of his concepts from the older doors, and I also kind of took this concept him and straight up ripped the uh, bottom closing from his 10 by 10 so yeah there they are uh, definitely going to make probably better versions of these before like before they get beaten because they will eventually get beaten uh, inevitably um, yeah i want to remove this card stack because this is total garbage i want to find a better way to do this and also maybe make this 10 by 10 a little faster just you know general improvements but this is just the first versions of the doors that just we threw together um, 11 by 11 was definitely a little harder, for sure, as you can probably tell. So, anyways, yeah, that's about it, and see you later.